Hi everyone, I'm Jake Kelly. Welcome to Life as an Artist, and this is the 30-30 challenge. <laughs> Alright, back down here. Just got in, and my mate who I rent this place from, he's upstairs, and he just evidence of the rain. Informed me that he's got to pay the water bill. Yeah, as an adult you have to do these things, which I, I never knew. And to do that you have to read the water meter. But I didn't know that, and when I set up the studio, I kind of built this wall over the water meter. So this might be a bit difficult. So I'm gonna peel everything back and try and uh, find it hopefully with as little damage as possible. Okay, so a bit of background information before I kind of crack on with this. I have showed you a lot of my constructions unit, which is these string pieces here, where I weave like a string over a frame, and there's a huge explanation for that, which I'm sure will come at some point, but today I want to explain about the water meter and the implications on the artwork. Because this isn't just a wall, this is also um, a working piece of art. So I make the constructions <clears throat> as a kind of homage to abstract painting. I was an abstract painter, I'm very interested in kind of uh, 60s abstract painting. I've talked about it in the past, I'm sure. I think uh, I talked about my influences. They're not good, good enough for me as a mode of output I'm concerned with I'm concerned with our society and I'm concerned with the art world and I a couple of years ago wanted to make a response to that. So I kind of take um odd bits of bric a brac from from my studio, whether it be flooring or leftover paintbrushes or whatever, and I mount them appropriately to kind of elevate them um to a piece of artwork, like so. Now this elevation does two things. It References again art history, you know, there's that Deschampion, uh, you know, he, he, he made the urinal, you know, he took ready-made objects and put them in there and that was kind of, it was a, it was a renunciation of the art world. It was him trying to say the idea is more important than the finished product and the aesthetics are, you know, not important. And the irony was that, that in the end they, they admired the piece for its, its, its aesthetics and he kind of um, quit the art world, you know, publicly and became like a full-time chess player. He became a chess grandmaster in the end or something like that. But I'm digressing. The the unit in question where I take the pieces of flooring and, and bric-a-brac is called Deconstructed Authenticity. The original idea of that was that in the age of kind of DNA analysis or whatever, you can prove that this painting was painted by that paintbrush and therefore there's a proof of authenticity, but it's a deconstructed variant of that authenticity. This idea then grew and I thought, well, if I don't sell the work, if I keep hold of it or I give it with some sort of contractual obligation where it's not sellable, then you undermine the art market and therefore you stand for anti-elitism and anti-kind of art, art as an economic tool. It's, for me, art is about art's sake and about the, the idea behind it and about um, the impact it can have on, on people's lives. I, I think the fact it's being used as tax write-offs or as investments for billionaires, that's just, it's missing the point and it, and it, and it makes art distasteful to, 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 to normal, ordinary people. And that's such a shame. You know, art, art is this fantastic thing that everyone should be able to access. And this unit is is in part about combating that problem. I'm not saying it, it, it's there yet, but there is an ethereality to it. You know, it is conceptual, but um, it might take 20 years before it kind of clicks and I think, oh, that makes perfect sense now. But I'm playing with it. And anyway, this piece, the idea was that I would, at the start of the studio, instead of building a normal wall, like I actually did for this photography wall here, I would put up the, the joists behind the metal, the, the wooden pole, sorry, and then run like a canvas skin over it. And that's exactly what I did. So this is a skin. So in whenever, one year or 10 years or whatever it is that I move to my next studio or whatever it is that I do, I can then take this skin, um, you know, this, what, what was it? I think it was five meters by two meters or something. Maybe I'll cut, cut it up into panels or just put it on one big stretcher. And it for me, you know, does the same thing. It's this massive piece, or, or it, well, it's a lot of material anyway that I can use later on. The upshoot of which is I would prefer not to cut the surface. So instead of cutting a nice hole here so I can just peek through and look at the meter, 
that would kind of, well, damage the integrity of it, which I don't want to do, if I can avoid it. If I do, then, you know, it's part of the piece, isn't it? You know, the idea is that it documents what you did in the studio in that period of years. But I've kind of talked a long time now, and I'm going to get on with, uh, with trying to find it.